most of the most of the hoses we get back from Long Reynolds. Um, you know, they're they're egg shaped on all the fittings. Um, we replace these fittings on here all the time, and that might be something you guys would be able to do as well. Even on the pumps here, um, those fittings are priceless if you can connect those easy, and it makes it a lot easier for the guys in the field to do as well. Um, the worst, one of my big pet peeves is just fittings that will not connect, and you're grinding, you know, dust and dirt. Um, trying to screw on fittings and they won't go and they won't seed these bearings. If the bearings will not seed, then you're not going to get oil flow. If you don't get oil flow, then nobody's doing any work. So um, it can be as simple as um, a couple $20 fittings can make your job just go a ton easier. So. Should never be tighter than a little bit more than hand tight. If you need to take a pair of channel locks just to get the fittings to at least connect, um, if they are like you know a little egg shaped, um, if you need to take a pair of channel locks, do it. But just be mindful that um, you don't want to take a pair of channel locks. And really pressure that. You can damage the, the uh, bearings in there so that even when they push, um, they, they it won't flow well. So um, I always kind of tell people hand tight, okay. but at the same time, especially using the low profile tools, when you're constantly moving this tool around, up and down and around, the fittings come loose. So if um, if I get a call and the pump's working fine, but the tool is not ratcheting. Um, nine times out of ten, it's fittings or not. They're not seated. So. <clears throat> um, first, connecting the tools. Um, you see, I just hit the pressure um, button and. Um, the piston stroked through, but it didn't actually turn anything. It's trying to grab the little pin that's inside there. So once I pressure it up and let it go once, um, now it should still fine. But um, you gotta let you gotta wait for the uh, piston to engage that little. Um, there's a piece in there the actual piston hook will grab onto and pull back and push forward. So that first engagement on putting the Tool on the hoses is pretty important. Um, Um, it's a process to get back in. So, um, 
Okay, he's got the pumps. He's got the pump set. Um, and why don't you go ahead and jump up and we'll torque this. It's loose now. So we'll torque this down. Um, what I always do too is make sure you test it. Just crank it once before you put it on the motor. Hold it and just that way it's off of the uh, off of the nut. You can cycle it once. Um, you'll get to know how it's spinning because I even have to look at these all the time. If I'm doing backwards, going forward, a lot of times you can take the um, links and you can actually ratchet it which way it's going. So I know if I'm holding this or I'm going this way, it's, it's torquing. If I'm going this way, it's detorquing. So before you put that up on the nut, um, just make sure you've got it spinning the right way. The, the, when you're two passes into a, a flange and all of a sudden you start detorquing everything, it kind of messes up the torque. So you really should redo a flange if, if that happens. I've seen guys do it where they're on their final pass and they're just not looking at the way that the, and they might have already done 15 flanges for the day. You're just not looking at which way the tool is ratcheting. You put it up on there and you just slowly detorque the whole flange you just torque. So um, just give it a, a quick whirl and um, you'll be able to see which way it's going. And um, <clears throat> when you torque, um, especially when you first get going, um, it is a monotonous thing. It is bolt after bolt after bolt. And it becomes kind of, you become kind of numb to like, not really paying attention to the pump, not really paying attention to the tool because you kind of get in the rhythm of it, which is fine. And it actually helps you go faster once you get into that rhythm. But um, just be aware that um, your pump pressure, check it every couple bolts, make sure the pump pressure is actually reaching what it needs to be. Because you can see this torquing. You'll see this pressure reach to what you said that, which is correct. 2400 psi equals 400 foot pounds. And I can hit this thing 500 more times. You're not going to torque anymore because your pressure on your pump is set to equal the amount of foot pounds that you need. So pass that around, just get an idea of um, the charts can be confusing. Every tool has got a chart. PSI on the pump equals a certain amount of foot pounds. And there's five different columns there of PSI to foot pounds, PSI to foot pounds. You kind of have to do that in order to give you the whole range of the tool. So um, you'll see for 400 foot pounds, 2,400 PSI equals 400 foot-pounds. So tell me what uh, 1,400 foot-pounds would be approximately on your PSI. Eight, eight, five, eight, what is it? 8,500. You have 8,500, yes. So when you're trying, when, when you know your final torque of your tool, of your, of your flange, um, then you can kind of work back on your steps of 30%, 60%, 90%, or however, like um, he said, whatever your procedure is, but you've got to know that final torque. When somebody calls and says, I've got, you know, series 600 flan, 12 inch, say, I know right away what bolt size those are, what nut size they are, but it doesn't really matter to me as much as the final torque, because once you know the final torque, you know what tool you can use, you know what, um, chart to give, and um, you'd be surprised how many people have been twerking for a long time, and looking at the charts can be confusing. So, um, yep. One of the things that I noticed that a lot of people don't realize is you have a too high, too low. Yes. And they'll, they're using the wrong chart or the wrong tool. It's, it is notorious how many flanges have been way, way over torqued because this tool right here, torque chart is not going to be the same torque chart as this tool. This is a 4,000 foot pound tool. This is a 2,000 foot pound tool. So if I set the pressure 
to, hey, Brian, if you could print out a uh, chart. Sorry to interrupt you. Just any chart you got. Um, <clears throat> if, say, 5,000, what's 5,000 PSI on this torque chart right there? Okay. 5,000 PSI? Yeah. Okay, so 820 foot pounds. 5,000 PSI on this tool is 2,000 foot pounds. Okay, so if you grab the wrong chart with the wrong tool, um, it can be pretty devastating. You could break bolts and hurt people. Or flanges. And, and those gaskets that are not cheap will be crushed and won't be able to be used again. So um, that is confusing. We've gone as far to um, take all your tools and like so we have what we call a fix. I'm going to pass this around. This is for the 4,000 foot pound tool. Take a look at that and you'll see the difference. Or you can maybe look at them together, actually, you can see that. Yeah. Look at them together at 5,000 PSI. You'll see the difference between um, your two low and your four low. Um, we've gone as far as to make standard charts that um, are very averaged out on tools. The problem with that is that you might have three or four different brands of tools. And some tools are monsters, and they'll torque, you know, at 5,000 psi. It might be 400 foot pounds different than the exact same tool on this, and you run it from the same pump, same hose, everything, and you will not get the exact same torque. So it's very tricky to um, appease an inspector with giving certifications um, and at the same time. Um, do the job correctly um, with two tools at one time. I, I, we don't um, recommend um, you can run two tools at once as long as the torque charts are very similar. Um, but you have to be very, very close on the torque charts. Um, you can't just go grab a four low and a two low and hook them both up to this pump. You're not going to get the same torque. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm.